thanks SOSB. Really appreciate y'all having us all here. And thank you to the audience for tuning in for what should be an amazing panel today. We're uh, talking to some of the heaviest of heavy hitters in the corporate venture capital space who have uh, done a lot of work in investment in early stage technology companies across the board, but we're specifically going to be talking about climate. And joining me today to make this conversation happen is Lisa Koka, the partner with uh, the Climate Fund at Toyota Ventures, Kapelia Marinkovic, a partner at Solvay Ventures, and Daniel Griffiths, the investment director at ADM Ventures. Thank you all for being with me today. Really appreciate it and looking forward to what should be an incredibly insightful conversation. Um, I'd like to start off when we'll go around the horn, I think, and I'd love to get a sense of how you think about your mandate as, as a corporate venture uh, investor looking at the climate space. So where are your priorities in climate um, and, and how is that reflected on, on sort of your, uh, the, the directives you may be getting from, from the, the corporate HQ? Um, Lisa, why don't we start with you and then we'll go to Capellia and then Daniel. Sure. Um, yeah, so what I would say um, in terms of, of our mandate is uh, we most people will assume that because uh, it's Toyota that we are investing purely at the intersection of uh, climate tech and mobility, but we're actually kind of a climate fund in the truest sense of the word. So we are looking at technologies uh, and solutions for uh, the reduction of emissions, the removal, um, as well as adaptation. And in the overarching, um, what I would say, goal for us is to support Toyota's, uh, their efforts in achieving carbon neutrality. Mm -hmm. And Capelia, how does, the, is it the same for Solvay or is it a little bit different in terms of the mandate that you've set for yourselves or that the company has set for you? Yeah, Solvay has a very high um, uh, sustainability goals and uh, in the venture team, we really support these goals. Um, so Solvay is a large specialty chemicals, advanced materials manufacturer. And so in the venture's team, um, we invest in companies that leverage chemicals and materials um, to solve big climate issues. Uh, and so really important themes are around energy transition, uh, where you know we look at batteries, hydrogen, uh, electric motors, materials for light weighting, and so we try to find ways to uh, work with uh, with these technologies. Another big topic is around decarbonization of resources, and so um, we look at carbon capture, uh, bio-based chemicals, circularity, uh, electrochemistry, mining, and, and topics that are uh, linked to business units as survey and that we support through the ventures team. And Daniel, why don't you take us home? Yeah, you bet. One. Thanks, thanks, Jonathan. So, um, first of all, thanks for the question, and, and great to be here with the with the with the panel. Um, you know, ADM Ventures. So, so we invest off ADM's balance sheet. ADM is a Fortune 50 uh, agribusiness company. What we do is we originate grains from farmers, process them into ingredients for food, feed, fuel, and industrial and markets. Um, when we think about investing on the venture side. I like to say we don't color outside the lines. Um, some of our peers have a little more uh, ability to color outside those lines, but we stay pretty pretty well aligned with ADM's uh, stated corporate strategy. Uh, for us, that means you know investing alongside or investing behind um, our, our kind of our growth platforms um, and our kind of enduring global trends that that are set at, at the C-suite. Um, you know, practically and tactically, what does that mean from an investment standpoint? Uh, well, you know, it means finding new ways uh, to to up value the the agro industrial products that uh, that we source from farmers, right? Mm -hmm. So um, new ingredients using the the same grains. Mm -hmm. um, well, that brings me to another question that I, I was I, I wanted y'all to address and and maybe clarify for the audience, which is the structure of the funds. So it, you know, I think it's important to remember that not all corporate funds are structured in the same way. Some invest off the balance sheet. Some are sort of evergreen funds. Some have to raise money, you know, every time they run dry and go back to the corporate well to prove their value, their worth, and their existence. Um, if if ADM is a balance sheet investor, 
where do Toyota Ventures and Solvay Ventures fall on this sort of continuum? Uh, Capelia, do you want to take it first? And then uh, Lisa, you go ahead. Yeah, so um, the the funds are Solvay Ventures come from balance sheet as well. Uh, we have uh, dedicated funds um, for our money. So we uh, all the returns, all the proceeds go back to, to the fund. So it, it is sort of an evergreen structure. Like, it's I, an evergreen it, structure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Lisa, how about for Toyota? Yeah, Toyota Ventures uh, really since inception has been structured a very similar to a traditional venture capital. So we, except we have a sole LP. So we have dedicated funds. We've got about a little more than 500 million in assets under management across uh, four funds. And um, yeah, the team gets carry. Uh, the Toyota Ventures was actually the brainchild of Jim Adler, who was a former successful serial entrepreneur. And so when he uh, uh, you know, really pr- approached Toyota about doing this, um, he was, he was as, as from his experience of being a former um, entrepreneur, he was adamant about the fact that you needed to uh, align the incentives of the venture team with the companies in which they are mm-hmm. investing. Mm. That's how that's how we work. And do you then sort of measure success in the way that a traditional venture fund measures success? It's not so much about the alignment with a Toyota corporate strategy, but more just about financial returns or how does that work? Yeah, you know, look, you always have to thread the strategic needle, otherwise you won't it will it'll stop writing checks, right? <laughs> So, 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 but we do, I mean, we fundamentally, when we're looking at deals, you know, we're, you know, every VC says this, right? We're looking for 10 X, right? So we're looking for financial home runs. And the reason why we think that's important is because the end of the day, if um, Jim Adler always says, well, you have to, uh, you have to, to finish the race first or to win or something, I can't remember, but it, at the end of the day, if a company is not financially successful, yeah, they will not be able to deliver strategic value. Right. Right. So so we're not evaluating things first and foremost based upon the strategic value. That's a needle that we that we sort of thread once we feel um, mm-hmm. like we've got a, a nice target. So first is the financial target, then you've got sort of the the strategic connection or alignment with with a Toyota vision. And and once you thread both of those needles or thread both of those needles, then you can sort of commit capital that that's when a deal becomes a deal for you guys. Um, well, what I would say is as we're evaluating it, we're always looking at both. Right. Okay. I mean, and, and, and I think we're always looking at financial and strategic, but we are not prioritizing the strategic right. is, is what I would say. And um, the other thing is we do not, um, our investments, we do not require any sort of uh, commitments. Uh, you know, our investments are not subject to any sort of formal partnership with the right. portfolio. Well, yeah, with so the that, company. That's interesting. There's a, a, another sort of CVC that, uh, so I'm based in Atlanta, right? And and there's yep. a, a CVC down here called Engage that actually works with a number of different corporate partners as sort of a, a, a venture fund that, that kind of looks out for all of their strategic interests as they align. Um, and one of the things that they do um, in an effort to to make that CVC relationship a little bit stronger is is to incentivize you know leadership within different divisions of the companies based on how they're able to integrate some of the venture investment technology products services whatever it may be into those business lines right and and so there's a real structure to get products from these portfolio investments into the halls of of these corporate ventures and i'm wondering capella and daniel like how how does that how does that compare with the way that y'all think about the work the corporate should be doing with a portfolio company after an investment let's say and lisa i'd like your take on that too but we're going to go to these folks first yeah sure go ahead yes um so, I mean, when we, I mean, 
uh, maybe just to follow up on, on, on the previous question, I mean, as an EVC, we also uh, look for investment that have good financial returns. But as a CVC, uh, we are probably even more strategic than um, Toyota's climate fund because we really need to be able to articulate uh, how we're going to work with the company and how we're going to create value together. Um, and so even if we don't necessarily need a joint development agreements or like a very formal relationship before any investment, we need to be our to be able to articulate the, that value creation. And so after an investment, when we work with a portfolio company, uh, usually we have in mind uh, what we're going to be working on. Um, and so there are really different ways that we work with our portfolio companies. Um, uh, for example, we invest in a carbon capture company and you can, we don't do carbon capture, but we can be users of carbon capture or we can provide materials that enhance the performance of their technology. Or we invest in battery companies. We don't do batteries, but uh, we provide materials that can be used in batteries and enhance the performance of, of these companies. So we really find ways and try to be creative around how we can work with uh, with the companies. If it's on the supply, if it's on opening new markets, uh, if it's on uh, co-developing products together. Mm. Daniel, yeah, I, I, and thanks for the question. It's something I. You know, my team, we think a lot about, right? Um, so when similar to, to the folks at Solvay, right? When we invest, we do so with an eye toward a collaboration. Uh, these things take time, right? So so it's not something that has to happen right away. And oftentimes startups just aren't, aren't ready. They're not there yet. Yeah. Um, but but in all cases, those those collaborations just kind of as a, as a setup are meant to be win-win. Um, you know, so that that can take a variety of different forms. Maybe it's product co-development, JDA. Maybe it's ADM as a as a customer, or a vendor, uh, some way, shape, or form that you know from which both parties benefit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I will say though that I I think a lot about two things. You know, one is the aircraft carrier speedboat problem. Um, these startups, you know, they raise a Series A or a B. They've got twenty four months and need to go go go. We don't operate at that same time scale, right? So sometimes, you know, finding the right, you know, matching those two cadences can right. be difficult, right. one. And then two, I think a lot about in, in incentives. Uh, you know, you show me an incentive, I'll show you an outcome. Um, sometimes those incentives don't always match up, right? Uh, so it can be a challenge to get, to get some of the corporate folks to adopt our startup technologies or to work as quickly as maybe our startups uh, want and need them to. Lisa, let's get your perspective. How does or may Toyota think about working with these portfolio companies if if there is this kind of separate structure? Yes. Yeah, so um, we actually have investment teams and then we actually have a platform team. So these are, this is a team that is, is dedicated. Once we've made an investment, every one of our portfolio companies will get sort of a, a director of engagement. And as the person who did the deal, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Right. But, but really, you know, their focus is making sure that we're delivering on that value add. Right. And that can be facilitating introductions. It can be bringing some sort of domain expertise that we have to bear that can to help the company like manufacturing, for example. Yeah. Um, and, and what I would say is, uh, uh, Dan, you used kind of the aircraft a carrier speedboat analogy i use the you know 500 pound gorilla you know bear hugs you know analogy <laughs> right and that's and amazing. that's you know and that yeah and they're they're both true but they're just different right and and that's the role of the engagement director right because sometimes even when they're i mean when the stars align and you really do have sort of the business units engaged right that that's what you want right like you're, you're like woohoo that's that's but right you, you you gotta you gotta at the end of the day it's our job to protect the portfolio company and to right. make sure that they do not get overwhelmed by um the, the large organizations that they aren't being asked to do things that are bespoke for toyota right because that that is not in their best interest long term yeah so. um this brings up another point, um, which is about sort of size and scale and stage, and what is the right size and scale and stage for um, a startup to start thinking about taking on corporate money. Um, a lot of corporate venture capitalists have been moving 
further down the investment stack and investing earlier in, in, in sort of a company's growth cycle. Um, so what is the appropriate stage for y'all for an investment so that you keep from turning the relationship between corporate and startup <laughs> from iceberg and Titanic to use another kind of like meta meta for, I was just, I'm trying to play along y'all. Come on, give me some. <laughs> Um, just give me some, um, but, but, um, yeah, Capella, why don't you start with, with sort of what's the right stage for, for a company to be at, to approach Solvay as, um, a potential investor. And then Dan, will take it to you and Lisa, you can, you can bring us home on that one as Sounds well. Good. Uh, so from an investment standpoint, we invest uh, from C to Series B, so we're pretty stage agnostic. Uh, I mean, the bar is already pretty high on the strategic side, so we don't try not to be too picky on the actual stage for the investment. Uh, however, uh, I guess on the contrary of Toyota, it's our team uh, who supports both the investment and the collaborations. So there's the investment, and then there's actually a lot of work that we do to support collaborations between startups and Solvay. Um, that's the general public doesn't see necessarily, but, um, and it can be our portfolio companies and also other companies. Mm. And so I would say that, um, I mean, the best way to engage is probably very early for us. Mm. Um, so as early as possible, even if you, it, it will not be ready for an investment for us. I think at least we can provide guidance on expectations, um, start thinking about ways of working together. Um, and then when the time is right, that the company is raising funds, um, then we have a better idea of you know how we could be working together. We know them better and it saves uh, a lot of time. Now, I want to double click on that for a second because I, I just want to clarify one thing. So should folks think about y'all as more of a, a sort of combined business development or early stage as technology relationship funnel and an investment fund. So would there be any cases where an early stage company comes to you and says, you know, uh, we have this amazing product, we think it'd be great to work with Solve on it, and they are not necessarily an investment fit for whatever reason, would you still be funneling them into the corporate partners to take a look at um, yes. for a potential partnership? Okay. Okay. Yes, we also support GDA's development, you know, like any type of collaborations um, that, that we do as well. You are about to get so many emails. You're about, to, I'm so sorry I did that to you. But, uh, it, it that's has, okay. We like to see more than less. So that's great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my feeling on things too. Dan, how about, how about y'all? How do you approach that yeah. both business development question and from a, a, cor a like capital commitment? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, you know, we, we from what I uh, could tell you describes, sounds like we have a fairly similar mandate um, as as a sole Bay Ventures team. Right. So so for us, it's it's both collaboration and investment. Um, sometimes it's just collaboration. Right. Rome wasn't built in a day. And so, hey, you know, maybe an investment isn't right right now, but it's important for us to, to build that relationship with the team gain that trust so that when, you know, an A, B, C round comes, comes into play that we're, we're, you know, ready, willing and able to make a commitment um, in terms of stage, right? It's, it's series A through C stage. Again, it's because of this aircraft carrier speedboat problem that I talk a lot about. Um, yeah. and I think a lot about too, is just, we need a, we need more than like three people and a dog in a garage, right? In, in order to kind of work, work together. Um, it's just, it, it's just our way of, a way of working at a, at a big company. But what I might do, Jonathan, is just answer a little different question of what you just posed. And, 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 and here's what I, what I want to say is that no two CVCs are, are alike. Right. And so the, the, the counsel that I would give to entrepreneurs is just ask a lot of questions. Right. Right. Because I think what you've heard from Lisa and from Capelli and from myself today is, you know, just we all have different mandates, different, different stages and, and different teams around us. Yeah. And and Lisa, I, I'm assuming given the the sort of financial profile first and and the operations more like a traditional venture firm that y'all are going to be directly focused on the investment side of things and not necessarily as looking to to make those connections with the the biz dev side of the shop or not. Well, what so the platform team that I referenced mm -hmm. is a part of Toyota Ventures. 
Okay. So it's not a separate team. It's just both both of those groups are within uh, Toyota Ventures. Um, and and you know, I'd like to sort of double click a little bit on the broader comment that you made. Then I'll come back to Toyota about the fact that CVCs are you know historically the view was uh, strategics really could only provide value in the later stages. And you know, I and and we're sort of moving down stack now. And, you know, I fundamentally believe that um, that strategics can add value throughout the right. life cycle of a company. But I do think, and this gets to Dan's point, I think you want to understand what the what the expectations are of that CVC, um, because, you know, you want to be a little wary if they're trying to tie your hands in any way. Right. Um, and I think that particularly too early, like that is a no, no. Right. Um, you know, with respect to uh, Toyota Ventures, um, yeah. So we have this. We have uh, the the portfolio, the platform team, and we do not support uh, collaborations. Only the the time and effort and the resources of our platform team are reserved for the uh, portfolio companies um, right. in which we. Are. Um, I I want to uh, just create some sort of filter for uh, for the audience of, of potential entrepreneurs who may be looking to reach out to you. Um, what things are y'all not interested in investing in right now that may have been in the past, you know, something that you'd looked at? What do you, what do you, yeah, what are you, what are you not digging right now? Um, and Lisa, I'll start with you this time. Sorry. Uh, Put me on the yeah. spot. Um, ah, what are we not digging right now? What I would say is we, we're still looking at pretty much everything. So we are looking at, we did a nuclear fusion deal. We're looking at fission. Um, we're looking at the carbon markets, um, hydrogen batteries. I mean, I, I can't say that any one thing is, is off the table. I think, um, for us, we haven't, um, yeah, we're 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 cutting a pretty broad swath. We have, um, you know, there's some areas where we're perhaps focusing a little bit more right now because our uh, we're almost fully invested mm -hmm. on our first fund. The second one will launch in October, November. So we're looking at sort of from a port we're, we're sort of managing that from a portfolio construction perspective. So where in this first fund have we not placed bets where we would like to place some bets? Where can we place some bets that are uh, complementary? So we talk about having a, a portfolio, uh, you know, group of portfolio companies that can speak to each other. So we actually have some of our companies that are, you know, one is doing, uh, you know, membrane and the other one needs electrolyzer, right? And so they're kind of partnering. Um, so we're, we're thinking about those things and trying to connect the dots, but we pretty much um, look at um, most Still things. casting a wide net is what I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. at. And, and so Capella, is there anything that's sort of off the table for y'all where you feel like you, you've gotten enough exposure and you, you don't want to see any more deals or is everything still on the table as long as it falls within this Venn diagram of like chemistry and strategic alignment with Solvay's broader objectives? No, I think my answer would be very similar to Lisa's. So, I mean, we're still very interested in the topics I mentioned. Uh, there, are, there are topics we've been investing for for a long time, like batteries uh, and uh, thinking about portfolio construction. I think this is a really important comment that Lisa made. Um, we we continue to invest in these areas, even if we have been investing for a long time, because there are always new things. Right. Uh, we don't think companies are competing with each other. Like, you know, we invested in, even if it's batteries and it's still, you know, lithium metal and silicon anodes and solid state. Yeah. And so it's really different types of technologies within the technology. So we continue to right. scout and to learn uh, a bit more focus maybe on, 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 on carbon and decarbonization now, uh, electrochemistry, uh, you know, biotech, um, I guess from a, a portfolio perspective, we, we think um, we, we support business units and we support a number of business units at Solvay. And so similarly, uh, we're trying to see where there are areas where we haven't heavily invested in the past, where we can actually support more of these business units and make more investments in that space. Uh, but there's nothing off the table, really. Right. Dan, any? Yeah, you know, never say never. 
right? I think you've heard that from, from the group yeah. here. Um, yeah. But hey, you know, like I That's said, it. ADM Ventures, we don't color outside the lines, right? Some of our peers can can do a lot more creative things than, than, than we can do. Uh, but for us, so that means predominantly we're staying, we're staying B2B, right? So anything right. that's kind of B2C, consumer branded is, I, is kind of off limits for us, mostly because we just don't understand it and yeah. we can't be helpful. I think that's, that's really interesting. How climatey do your climate investments need to be? I, if that makes sense, like how much do you need to focus on, on thresholds like mitigation or adaptation targets when you're thinking about these things and, and how do you measure them? Do you need that? Like we're going to remove a gigaton of carbon, like some of the other funds do, you know, your lower carbons or your breakthrough energies of the world. I'll start. So first of all, I'd, I'd like to address the point of adaptation and sustainability, which is also climate, you know, it, it, it is impactful from a climate perspective, right? You know, I think the way that we think about it is we're looking for the technology or the solution to have a primary climate impact, mm -hmm. not secondary tertiary. And what I mean by that is there are, uh, there are companies out there that are focusing, the, everyone is of the belief that there's going to be a shortage of bioreactors. And so there are, there are companies out there that are trying to come up with alternative solutions. I, I struggle with quantifying the climate impact of a bioreactor company, right? Because it's not it's not direct, right? The climate impact is actually going to come from whatever being pro you know the output of the bioreactor, and so that that's kind of how we think about it. Mm. Um, and honestly, most of the things in climate, particularly if it's B two B, they're like huge markets, right? right. They're, they're huge. They're impactful. Um, this is not like when you're doing enterprise software, right? And you have to sit down and pencil out like, you know, how big is this market opportunity? I mean, these markets are huge, right? Um, so uh, it, it's easy to find the impact, the primary impact, I think. Mm. Capelli? I guess the short answer is is no, we don't have to quantify, uh, you know, like uh, breakthrough energy ventures would have to do. Sustainability has been on the roadmap of Soya for so long now and in our mandates, that we have to go through um, a committee that assesses the sustainability of what we're doing. Uh, we need to be able to articulate how it's going to uh, reduce, uh, you know, some form of environmental impact. Uh, but for us, you know, the strategic fits being already so important and there are so many stars to align that we haven't added that, you know, special constraint of a specific quantification. But again, we need to be able to articulate, you know, how this would impact positively the environment. Yeah. Lisa's comment about the size and scale of these of these problems, these opportunities, really really rings true, especially to come to like ADM, right? Because our North Star is you know kind of the ADM stated corporate sustainability goals, which are our Strive Thirty Five goals. And so when we you know we look to leverage our investments, particularly our later investments, to you know boost those those goals, to kind of turbocharge the achievement of those goals. Yeah. Um, Again, example being the partnership we have with uh, with Farmers Business Network um, around originating or sourcing um, sustainable grains uh, for our regenerative agriculture programs. Right, um, that's kind of how we we approach it. Um, it's a little different because of you know of our corporate parent. Way to drop in the unicorn, man! On the like that, what a humble guy. <laughs> and on that note, I think we are going to have to wrap up the panel.